Welcome back to Empires and Cocktails. I'm Sir Ricky Bobby, and we are continuing our look on Prohibition drinks. I've been making my own spirits here at home just for this occasion. Today, we're going to bust out my homemade apple brandy. Before we test whether I'm a true distiller or just a hack, we need to get the juices flowing with something tried and true. Today's victory shot is Wild Turkey 101. I'm gonna have to try really hard to beat something like that. While we have this week's history lesson, we're going to enjoy drinking my homemade Amaro. Now, Prohibition was marketed as a way to save the man, save the family, and save the country. Propaganda claimed that it would make this country pure. But that's not exactly what happened. You know, the term organized crime didn't really exist before prohibition. Sure, there were small street gangs from time to time, but that was mainly small petty bullies. It wasn't really until prohibition that major cities started to see a mob presence, a mafia presence, and of course, Al Capone. Capone was an anti-prohibitionist. He dealt in illegal alcohol and prostitution. And at first, many people in Chicago saw him as being a Robin Hood type of figure, bringing the booze back to the people. But in his later years, he was seen as one of the most violent murderers of the 20th century. So, thanks to our conquest to make this nation pure, safe, and godly, we now have more killing, gang wars, and of course, the bloody Valentine's Day Massacre. Thanks so much for passing the Constitutional Amendment number 18. Great job, guys. Three quarter ounce of freshly squeezed lemon juice. Half ounce of grenadine. We're gonna try my homemade version. two and a half ounces of apple brandy. But first, we have to have ourselves a shot. We're gonna try my homemade apple brandy. Mm. That's gold, man, that's gold. and add a lemon twist in the shape of a rose. And that's a Jack Rose. Today's word of wisdom is difference, or better yet, what's the difference? We've all heard the saying, you say tomato, I say tomato. Just because you say things differently than I do, doesn't make me wrong nor does it make you right, or vice versa. Sometimes I take a piss in the loo while you take a whistle in the john. But in the end, we're both draining our bladders in search of relief. When four people are sitting around and the first guy asks for the time, the second person responds, it's a half past three, while the third says, no, actually it's 3.30. But the fourth says, actually, it's 329. So, in the end, nobody was wrong. They were just doing things differently. 
Stop being hard on others for having different methods than your own. If we were all the same, we would all stand the risk of being a one-speed driver who flies through school zones yet, pokes on the interstate, can't stop at stop signs, and pulls out in front of semis. Sometimes it's nice to be different. Give me a second here. Ha <laughs> ha, that's awesome.